new MacBook Air with the M2 or MacBook Pro 14 with the M1 Pro? What do we think? This is a question a lot of you guys have been asking me because once you spec the M2 Air with more RAM or more storage, it gets very close to the price of this. So which should you buy? Well, I can tell you straight away which one I wouldn't buy, and that is the one I've not got here, the 13-inch uh, MacBook Pro with M2. It has the old design, which is basically from 2016, with the touch bar, it's got the old rubbish webcam, and it costs £100 more than the Air. It does have some advantages though. Uh, for starters, it comes with the 10 core GPU. Normally that's a hundred pound uh, extra on the air. It also has a fan for better sustained performance and also a slightly longer battery life. So the Pro 13 has a very niche appeal. It may be perfect for some people, but for me, I wouldn't trade all the quality of life improvements you get with this design for a little bit extra performance and a little bit longer battery. And actually if performance is something that you are worried about, then this is what you should be considering anyway. So really it's gonna come down to should you buy the Air or the 14 inch Pro? Well, let's start with the price. And this will set you back 1,250 pounds here in the UK, whereas this is 1,900. So straight off the bat, that is quite a big difference, 650 quid more. Uh, so how could you possibly convince yourself that's worth paying the extra for. Well, I would say perhaps with the base model, then it is kind of hard to justify, but that's the problem with the M2 Air. Realistically, you're gonna to want to get more RAM or more storage. And if you do spec the Air with 16 gigs of RAM and also the faster 512 storage, don't forget the 256 is significantly slower on the M2 Air, although whether you'll actually be able to notice that difference, I'm not sure. But with those upgrades, the difference then becomes just 250 pounds. And of course, the cheapest Pro 14 still gets the 16 gig of RAM and 512 storage. This is gonna be tricky, so what are the pros and cons? Well, let's start with the design because the main advantage of the Air is, well, it's more portable. It's 1.24 kilograms versus 1.6, and this is 11.3 millimeters thick versus 15.5. So the Air is 25% lighter and 31% thinner. That is a fairly significant and noticeable difference. Although, in the Pro's favor, it does have a slightly bigger screen, 14.2 uh, versus 13.6, and also the extra thickness means there's room for a fan and more ports. Both have MagSafe, but while the Air only has two Thunderbolt USB 4s, the Pro adds a third USB, an HDMI 2, and a full-size SD card reader, which for me, I use every day for taking photos and videos off my camera. Also, the Air is still limited to just one external monitor, uh, whereas if you want a multiple monitor setup, then you can have to go for a Pro. So it comes down to, if you're happy to carry around a slightly thicker and heavier laptop, it is a noticeable difference, but it's not exactly the Pro 16. It's not gonna weigh you down in your backpack necessarily, but the advantage is you're getting more ports, uh, you're getting that fan, which we'll come back to in a second for the performance, and also it supports multiple screens. But if none of those things really bother you, then go for the lighter M2 Air. The keyboard and the touchpad are identical, especially now the Air has the full-size function row and touch ID on the power button. The only visual difference is the Pro has this all black on black design, whereas the Air is black on whatever color you went for, midnight in this case. In fact, the Air now comes in four colors, including the snazzy new midnight and starlight, versus the Pro's two options, which are bland and bland. I mean, gray and silver. We do also have this speaker grill flanking the keyboard on the Pro, uh, which the M2 Air actually removed coming from the M1 Air. The thing is though, while this does have a new quad speaker setup and it's a marginal improvement over the M1 Air, you can just about hear a little bit more bass and also at high volumes, uh, it remains clearer than the M1 Air. There's not much in it. And actually this, with its force canceling woofers, it just blows away both the airs in terms of speaker quality. Hang on, is that the same color as my shirt? Almost color matching with my MacBook there. Hang on, is that the same color as my shirt? Almost color matching with my MacBook there. Now the last thing to note about the design is that while they both have a notch, it's the same size, the problem with this is it's still using an IPS LCD screen. So when you're watching movies or videos or playing games and you've got a dark background like letterboxing uh, at the top and bottom of the screen, those dark gray, slightly washed out blacks stand out next to this true, properly physically black notch compared to this, which has the mini LED screen with much higher contrast and therefore deeper, inkier blacks. And so it blends in. It is a small point though. I don't think I would make my whole buying decision based on that. 
But whichever laptop you choose, make sure you also pair it with a good VPN. Now I use Surfshark, who are a long-term sponsor of the channel, and it's one of the first apps I download on any new phone, laptop, or even in my Chrome browser. You can get it for pretty much every platform, and also one account lets you use an unlimited number of devices. So as you know, there's a whole bunch of reasons you might want to use a VPN, including letting you access region-locked content, but for me, it's more about the safety aspect. And Surfshark's clean web tool helps prevent tracking and ads and malware and all that nasty stuff. So whenever I'm logging into my bank or my email or just my YouTube account, whatever I'm doing, I know it's safer because I'm using Surfshark VPN. The best bit though, is if you use the code TECHCHAP at the checkout, you can get 83% off and three months extra for free. And there's also a 30 day money back guarantee. So click the link in the description below and give Surfshark VPN a try. What I might base my buying decision on though, or at least a significant part of it, is the screen. This is a big reason to go for the Pro. It's mini LED, which as I say, means much higher contrast and also much higher brightness. It's HDR and we get Pro motion, so up to a 120 Hertz refresh rate. The 14 Pro just has a better screen in every sense. And firstly, in terms of brightness, according to Apple, in SDR content, so everything that isn't HDR, these both should be 500 nits. That's one of the upgrades with the Air from 400 to 500. So that should be about the same. But actually, uh, with my Lux meter, wherever it's gone, I measured 462 nits on the Air versus 491 on the Pro. So even that everyday SDR level of brightness seems to be a touch higher on the Pro. But then, when you do fire up an HDR video, movie, game, whether you're playing it or editing, this is in a whole other league, with a peak brightness of 1502 nits, according to my Lux meter. Now normally what I would say is, how often are you really going to watch or play stuff in HDR? Most of the time, when you're on the UI, when you're in you know, websites doing everyday stuff, it's SDR, so they're both going to be around 500 nits, thereabouts. Well, let me introduce you to this little app called Vivid. I met the developer of this when I went to Apple Park for the unveiling of the MacBook Air, and he actually has created an app that actually unlocks that HDR 1000 nits across the whole of Mac OS, the entire UI. It'll simply drain your battery a bit quicker and use more of the CPU. But for me, it's this little hack that unlocks the brightness throughout that makes a huge difference to everyday usability. And once you pair that brightness with the almost infinite contrast of the mini LED screen, albeit with some blooming and light bleed, although it's much better than the iPad Pro 12 9, and colors, blacks, and even those pesky letterboxing, it all looks so much richer and more vibrant on the Pro. Top it all off with ProMotion, which dynamically adjusts the refresh up to 120. And if you've ever used a 120Hz PC monitor or laptop, it's tough to go back to 60. Just moving the cursor or scrolling through websites or scrubbing around in my timeline, everything is smoother. But if you can, go into an Apple store and try them for yourselves and see what you think. But I think across the board, it's a big win for the Pro when it comes to the display. It's brighter, it's smoother, uh, it's got much higher contrast, and actually it's slightly higher resolution as well. We're looking at about 253 PPI versus 224, I think. So uh, I'm not sure if you really better see the difference there, but this is technically a little bit sharper as well. One thing you don't have to think about though, is the webcam, because they're pretty much the same setup, same 1080p resolution, same three mic array. There really shouldn't be much in it here, and I don't believe there are any significant improvements with the M2's ISP over the M1 Pro. So let me know if there's any difference in the comments, but this should be pretty much the same. Okay, next question. M2 versus M1 Pro, which is faster? Well, essentially the M1 Pro is the same as the M1 that you get in the basic MacBook Air, but with a media engine and a much beefier GPU and more unified memory. And then the M1 Max that so you have the option to pay more and get with this is basically two M1 Pros stuck together, and that's the technical term. Plus the pros get a fan built in, which should help improve performance over time. It will reduce throttling. Now we come to the M2, which is built on the same five nanometer architecture as the M1 and the Pro and the Max. But compared to the M1, they've added that media engine, which was previously exclusive to the Pro and the Max. Uh, they've also doubled the memory bandwidth, and also the processor clock speeds are a little bit higher. And in my review of the M2 Air, while the synthetic benchmarks weren't all that impressive, in my real world tests, I found it to be about 25 to 30% faster overall. And that's with the base model I have here. But we are not talking about the M1 Air, we are talking about the M2 versus the M1 Pro. And in single core, the M2 is actually 5% faster on average. However, the M1 Pro is a more substantial 18% faster in multi-core. 
and it's also about 10% faster in Passmark, which isn't really a significant upgrade. But if we then bring in the 3D Mark Wildlife Graphics Test, here we're looking at a 36% uptick. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're averaging 70 FPS on the M1 Pro, which is 67% faster. Let's fire up a bit of Premiere Pro, and I've downloaded the Puget Test, which runs through a range of effects, exports, timeline playback, and across the standard and more intense extended tests, the MacBook Pro 14 scored 90% uh, higher. That can't be right, 90%. Well, the reason there I think is because this has that ProMotion 120 hz screen, and in that Puget Test, that actually factors into the live playback score, which arguably makes sense because you are getting a smoother visual experience when you're using this, but I don't think it's really fair when it comes to comparing the hardware. So dropping this down to 60 hertz, so uh, they are level, and running the tests again, we're still seeing a significant 63% jump on average. That's pretty big. Now in terms of just export times, the Pro 14 was around 25% quicker, which is enough to shave off nearly two minutes. Then, in Final Cut Pro with an H.264 export, the M1 Pro was a little bit quicker, but with a ProRes export, it was around three times faster. I repeated it three times on each, and the times were similar. In Blender, the Pro 14 was nearly four minutes quicker to render 500 frames, and finally, firing up a bit of Lightroom, the M1 Pro was a good four minutes quicker here. So I think it's fair to say the MacBook Pro 14 with the M1 Pro comfortably wins when it comes to performance, which is surprising to pretty much no one. We've got more cores, uh, we've got a much faster GPU, we've got more memory in here. This is 16 gigs, this is eight gigs. And of course, if you were to pay extra and get 16 on here and also the two extra GPU cores, then that would close the gap a little bit. But what I'm also seeing with the M2 Air is that it's hitting its thermal ceiling a lot quicker, even compared to the M1 Air. So this is gonna have to throttle back a little bit, whereas the fan on here can just wear up and sustain those peak performances for much longer, which is why the M2 13 inch Pro will be a bit faster than this, but as I said at the beginning, I don't think that's really worth the trade in terms of design and quality of life improvements that you do get. But that's not all, because there was something else that surprised me here. You know how we now know that the base 256 gig version of the M2 Air comes with uh, a single memory slot module, so uh, it's actually slower, quite significantly slower than even the base M1 Air. These two are both 512 gig storage models, so I was expecting the speeds to be roughly the same, but they're not. This is about twice as fast. Could you actually tell? Well, most people probably not, but it's still a significant and surprising difference. Okay, last question, because it's about 37 degrees outside and I am melting in the studio. Which one lasts longer? Well, this is gonna be nice and quick. The Air does. In my everyday general use test of FaceTime and Google Docs and uh, a bit of gaming and a bit of editing, just you know, normal, moderate stuff, this lasted me 10 hours and 15 minutes. This lasted eight hours and five minutes. To be fair though, I've used this quite a lot and the battery life is not something I worry about on a sort of day-to-day -day basis. And if I am gonna be doing any more intense editing, then I'll probably bring the charger anyway. But in terms of just pure length of battery life and just not having to worry about it at all, yeah, the M2 Air wins. And you're probably gonna get an extra two, two and a half hours out of this over this. So let's wrap this up. Which one should you actually buy? Well, you know how YouTubers usually sit on the fence and say, well, it's up to you, it depends what you want. I'm gonna give you a conclusion. I'm gonna say, get the 14-inch Pro, if you can. You shouldn't have to, that's the problem. When the uh, M1 Air came out a couple of years ago, everyone was saying, including myself, this is the best laptop in the world. Ignore everything else, unless you want you know, to play games. Uh, go for the M1 Air. It's not as simple now because the M1 Air still exists for 999 and you can get some quite significant discounts on that as well. So I think for most people, if you're coming from any old Intel powered Mac, even a MacBook Pro 16 with an i9, even the M1 Air, let alone the M2 here, is gonna be a significant upgrade. You probably don't need this. Also, if you do think you'll be hitting the limits of this in terms of performance, then there's no question really, you absolutely should be going for this. Don't pay over the odds for the Air when you could get a Pro, which comes with a much better screen, much better speakers, and much better performance. But if you've watched this whole video, and if you have, I appreciate it, and you thought, I'm not gonna use any of that power, I'm not blendering, rendering, or editing every day, then no, you don't need it, it's overkill. And why not go for a more portable, more lightweight, sleeker laptop instead? And so if you're like a fancy student with some deep pockets and just want a nice everyday laptop and you want a little bit of a better experience than the M1 Air, then yeah, grab yourself one of these and probably just stick with the base model. I know the 256 gig storage is slower, but you're not really gonna notice, I don't think. But given the price difference, once you 
up the spec of this one a little bit. I think the entry level model of this, the base 14 inch Pro with the M1 Pro is almost the perfect laptop. I love this thing, but what do you reckon? Which one would you go for? or none of the above. Let me know in the comments below. If you've got any questions at all, let me know as well. Make sure you have hit that subscribe button as I have my Dell XPS 13 Plus versus MacBook Air video coming very soon, as well as tons of other videos actually. It's a bit hectic at the moment. Uh, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat. Oh, and don't forget to give Surfshark VPN a try. 83% off and three months extra for free using the code TechChap. Just click the link in the description below to get started.